Hello, I am Avijit Datta from IAI TCG Crest and today I am going to present our paper Permutation Based EDM and Inverse Free Beyond Birth Bound Secure PRF. It's a joint work with Mridul Nandi and Supta Talnikar. In 1988, Lube and Rakoff in their seminal paper showed how to construct a pseudorandom permutation from pseudorandom functions. Since then, many practical block ciphers, for example Camellia, Ghost, etc., have been designed under the Lube Rakoff framework. However, block ciphers are designed to work on fixed length strings. Therefore, to process variable length strings, we generally use different modes of operations, which are built on top of block ciphers. From the security perspective, we seek for the PRF security from these modes of operations. Therefore, at one extreme, we have a mode of operation, which are based on block ciphers, and at the other end, we require its PRF security. To bridge this gap, one can think of to build mode of operations out of PRFs instead of block ciphers. But PRF is rarely available in practice compared to the block ciphers because building non-invertible round functions which are iterated over multiple rounds to construct PRF is basically harder to design than designing invertible round function. Moreover, most of the modes of operations although they are built on top of block ciphers but they never evaluate the block cipher in the inverse direction. Therefore, summarizing above, we can conclude that pseudorandom function as a primitive is a better choice over pseudorandom permutation. In fact, if we instantiate the counter mode of encryption with a PRF instead of a PRP, then it will give the optimal security. Nevertheless, due to the PRP PRF switching lemma, one can argue that the block cipher itself is a good PRF and hence one can consider block cipher as a PRF in block cipher based modes of operation. But this solution comes at the cost of birth bound security, which may not be adequate when the block size of the underlying block cipher is small, for example of 64-bit block cipher. Therefore, we see that we have pl plenty of practical block ciphers, but we require practical candidates of PRF that can be used as primitives in modes of operation. We have seen that using block ciphers as primitive is not always a good solution. Therefore. We require to construct PRF out of block ciphers with beyond the birth amount security. Over the years, many such constructions have been proposed. To start with, uh, the first construction which we call the summer permutation construction is a very popular construction which is a uh, block cipher based PRF that takes an n minus 1 n bit input and it gives an n bit output which is nothing but the sum of two permutations evaluated at the input x. And it has been shown that this construction is optimally secure construction. The other construction, which we call the EDM deconstruction, it is again based on two independent permutation, but it's a sequential construction. And this construction was proposed in Crypto 17 by many can names, and the, they have shown that this construction achieves optimal security. The sum of PI, some PIP construction, this construction is again kind of a sum of permutation construction, but instead of two independent permutation, it is the sum of a permutation P and its inverse, which is evaluated at a point X. So x is an n bit input and the sum of the output is uh, considered to be the uh, sum of the outputs of this permutation is considered to be the output of the construction which is y. And again this construction has been shown to be secure up to 2 power 2 n by 3 many queries. In crypto 16, Cognitian and Surin has proposed have proposed their construction so which we call encrypted Davis Mayer construction so this is similar to the ADM deconstruction. And uh, this construction is again based on two independent permutations p1 and p2. And this construction has been proven to be secure up to 2 power 3n by 4 queries. In fact, the single kit variant of the EDM construction, it achieves 2n by 3 bit security. Uh, single kit EDM deconstruction achieves 2n by 3 bit security. The other construction which has recently been proposed by Gunsing and many, uh, which we call the summation translation hybrid technique. And in this construction, it takes an n minus 1 bit input and it truncates the leftmost a bits of the output of the permutation which is evaluated at x concatenate 0 and x concatenate 1 and then it sums the remaining discarded input outputs that is n minus a bit outputs of the uh, permutation which is evaluated at x equal to 0 and x equals to 1 and eventually it produces n plus a bit output and this construction is uh, has been shown to be secure up to n minus a by 2 bit security where n minus a is the number of discarded bits of the permutation p okay so block so uh, block cipher is basically considered to be a workhorse of symmetrical cryptography and it is a very good primitive of different kinds of modes of operation but beside that 
we have another cryptographic object which is considered to be as good as block cipher uh, as, as a primitive in different types of modes of operation which we call as a permutation or a public permutation so block ciphers as a primitive are designed to be efficient in both direction whereas public permutations are particularly designed to be fast in the forward direction but not necessarily in the inverse direction for example kjak kimli spongenet etc one of the important distinguishing characteristics between the block cipher and the public permutation is that when we employ a block cipher in a mode of operation and at each time of invocation of the block cipher the underlying key scheduling algorithm of the block cipher needs to be evaluated whereas for a permutation based design we do not need to invoke the key scheduling algorithm of the permutation because permutation does not employ the key scheduling algorithm at all moreover all the block cipher based prs that we know of they, they evaluate the block cipher in only in the forward direction they do not evaluate the block cipher in the inverse direction so from this perspective we can say that block cipher is somehow a over engineering primitive for those modes of operation that do not invoke the inverse of the block cipher and in those situations we can think that public permutation is a better choice over block cipher as a primitive so next the question that arises that can we design permutation based prf so the use of public permutation has been noted in the design of sponge type of construction and this sponge type of construction has a, had a different motto of designing uh, authenticated encryption and hash function because the uh, way the sponge function evaluates it takes a less amount of you know uh, hardware area or less amount of size state size so uh, however that uh, one can easily tweak that sponge construction to 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 convert it to a prf for example if you just employ a key to the sponge construction then different type of key sponge construction uh, and, and this for for construction these are the two prominent example of a permutation based prf but an inherent drawback of this permutation based prf is that they are of variable length and their security is only up to the birth bound of the capacity of the underlying permutation that means the the, the security of the resulting prf does not exploit the entire state size of the permutation it is only up to the capacity part but the bound of the capacity part of the permutation well this solution may be adequate enough when the underlying permutation is of moderate size say for example if it's a sharp, sharp permutation which is of 1600 bits then the solution is enough but it is not useful with lightweight permutation for example photon or sponge net therefore can be designed a pseudo random function based on public permutation that achieves beyond the birth bound security so this line of research has started with the work of chen and manning chen, chen, chen et al uh, with their popular construction which we call the sum of even mansur construction and sum of key alternating uh, cipher so this construction these two constructions were proposed in crypto 19 so sum of even mansur construction is taking two independent permutations and two independent n bit keys and it is just uh, out taking the zor of the output of p1 and p2 so this construction achieves a 2n by 3 bit security bound and that bound is essentially tied because they have given a corresponding matching attack however if you make these two permutations identical or the do or these two keys identical then the resulting construction can only give you the birth bound security the other constructions proposed in the same paper is known as the sum of key alternating ciphers so sum of key alternating ciphers is some, somewhat a uh, sequential based construction so when this p1 and p2 are same or identical then they term it as a sokc1 and when the underlying keys are same then they term it as sokc21 it has been shown that sokc21 is uh, 2n by 3 bit secure and that security bound is tight and chen et al in the same paper have shown that there is a birth bound attack on sokc1 however Later in Eurocrypt 20, Nandi has shown a birth bound distinguishing attack on SOKC21, and Chakrabarti et al. in FSC 2020 shown a distinguishing attack on SOKC1 with query complexity to power 2n by 3. And most importantly, Chakrabarti et al. have uh, pointed out some kind of a uh, uh, dispute in the attacking algorithm of SOKC1. And they have shown that the, uh, the attack still works, I mean, with 2 power 2 n by 3 query complexity, but again, the bound has not been proven to be tight. So, uh, proving the security bound of SOKC1 up to 2 power 2 n by 3 many queries remains open. So, 
so these two constructions so p and uh, so so what we have seen that uh, s o k a c 2 1 so s o k a c 2 1 when these keys are same so that is a birth bound secure constructions fine so we have only the s o k a c 1 that means this p 1 and p 2 these two are identical and that construction is is achieving the uh, attack complexity of 2 power 2 n by 3 but that has not been proven to be secure up to 2 n by uh, 2 power 2 n by 3 many query complexity so can we so therefore now we ask the question that can we design a permutation based pseudo random function with a single key to this end chakravarti et al in fsc 20 have proposed their construction which we call the pdm map and they have shown that this construction achieve a tight 2 n by 3 bit security bound and one can easily turn this construction to a non-spaced map and they call it as a pdm star map and that also achieves the similar security bound however their construction employs a permutation p and its inverse and that implies two two calls two permutation calls so in the in the in the paper they have conject they have they have posed an open problem that can we design a bbb secured pra with one permutation and two forward calls so here they have employed a, po a forward call and an inverse call so what it what remains open that can we design a beyond the bound secure pra with with two permutation with with one permutation but with two forward calls here is our construction that actually solves that open problem and we propose our construction which we call permutation based encrypted divisional construction we have shown that this construction requires two independent n bit keys and uh, but it is based on a single permutation and it requires only the forward calls no back no inverse calls and we have shown a tight 2n by 3 bit security bound of this construction it does not require the inverse of the permutation and we believe that if we make all this all the underlying independent uh, all the underlying round keys to be the same that means if k1 equals to k2 then also this construction will hold the bbb security but well that may require some strong variance of some advanced uh, you know advanced results of some capture lemma okay so here is a brief comparison chart between different type of permutation based prf constructions so the constructions which are highlighted in blue so these constructions are parallel construction and the remaining constructions are the sequential constructions so uh, out of this sequential construction we can see that pdm mac is uh, one such construction that does not require that that, that does require the inverse inverse call of the permutation whereas other construction does not require the inverse call of the permutation but this sokac1 or sokac21 or pdm they require say for example sokac uh, 2 2 1 so we will obsolete this SOKC 2 1 because it is actually you know uh, giving you the uh, but the bound security but for SOKC 1 it is having the f one permutation and two keys but it has been shown to have the attack complexity of order 2 power 2 n by 3 but we have not been able to prove the upper bound of the security of this construction so PDM is the only such construction till now which achieves a uh, tight security bound of 2 power 2 n by 3 and it requires one permutation and two keys so uh, let us uh, let us see uh, briefly the rationale of the attack on our construction so the main thing of the attack of uh, of the attack on our construction is the following that if we make a construction query with say x and we the output is y and if there are two primitive queries such that the first permutation the first call the, the the input to the first permutation call collides with some input of the primitive query and the corresponding output of the construction query the corresponding output of the second permutation call collides with the output of some another primitive query that means what we will do that for each key value k1 we will check whether this conditions or this equation satisfies that means x plus u1 equals to k1 and y plus k1 equals to some v2 okay so we will we will find out or we will we will construct a set sk1 for each k1 okay and in this set sk1 we will we will keep the record of this triplet ij and k that means xi plus uj equals to some k1 and yi equals to yi plus vk then for each k1 such that that the cardinality of the set sk1 is at least 2 we will check this following condition whether it holds or not if it holds then we say that the k1 is a potentially true candidate key and that candidate key we will add to our set which is called a cap math cal k 
okay and our claim is that if k1 star and k2 star are the pair of true keys then the probability that k1 star belong to this set k is at least 0.687 which is at least greater than half and the probability of the cardinality of k is at least 128 is at most 0.5 we have shown that the time complexity of our attack is ordered of 2 power 4 n so it is not a computationally very uh, efficient attack it's kind of an information theoretic attack and the number of construction and for that information theoretic attack the number of construction queries that we require is 2 power 2 n by 3 plus 1 and the number of primitive queries that we require is 2 power 2 n by 3 plus 2 so we briefly go to the security model and h coefficient technique so h coefficient technique is a combinatorial tool to distinguish to bound the distinguishing advantage of two random systems so here a is an adversary who is interacting in either of the two worlds in real world or in the ideal world so in real, real world comprised of two oracles fpk and the permutation p and the ideal world is comprised of again two oracles a random function and the permutation p so uh, this so this adversary is in, so if the adversary is interacting with the real world then it will it can uh, interact with uh, the pair of these oracles similarly if it interacts with the ideal world then it will interact with the, this pair of oracles and finally after interacting with the oracle the adversary has to distinguish that whether he has interacted with the real world or the ideal world and in this way we will define the advantage of the adversary a in distinguishing the real world from the ideal world as the sum of, as the difference of these two probability and uh, to, to, to upper bound this advantage of this adversary A, by using the H coefficient technique, we require to identify or we require to do this following three things. First of all, we require to identify the bad transcript. Then we require to upper bound the probability of bad transcripts in the ideal world. And then if we take any good transcript, then we will need to lower bound the ratio of the real to ideal interpolation probability for that good transcript. Okay, so what is the transcript? Transcript is nothing but a summary of the interaction between the adversary and the oracle. Okay, so in order to prove the security of, the, of our construction, we require a sum capture lemma. So sum capture lemma is a very old result proposed by Babai in 2002, which roughly says that if A is a random subset of 0 and power n, then for any BC, where B and C are again two, two, two subsets of 0 and power n, the cardinality of this set that means the cardinality of this triplet a b c such that a equals to b plus c that is less than this term the the uh, product of the cardinality of a b and c over 2 power n is is very small okay uh, so at this this uh, this result sum capture lemma uh, which is proposed by Chen and all it's just a tweaked version of the original sum capture lemma and this was used in 2014 by the result of Chen et al which says that this a this random subset of 0 and power n it arises from the interaction of an adversary with a random permutation p namely a is the sum of x plus y where x is the input and y is the output of a trans uh, of, of our interaction then for any uh, subset b and c of 0 and power n this, uh, this the, the, the cardinality of this set that means x plus y and b and c such that x plus y equals to b, b plus c it is at most q times b time, the cardinality of b and c, the product of the b and c over 2 power n is very is very low okay now we briefly go to the stage of the security proof where we will identify the bad events so the first bad event says that if we have a construction query say x comma y such that the input to the first permutation call collides with the input of a primitive query and the output to the second permutation call collides with the output of any other primitive query see if this happens then actually the middle part is known to the adversary similarly bad 2 says that if we have two construction query such that for the first construction query say x and y so this the, for the first construction query, the input to the first permutation call collides with the input of some primitive query and the output collides with the output of some other construction query. The third bad event says that if there is a construction query such that the input to the first permutation call collides with the input of some primitive query, therefore this output is determined, so that will be V, okay, and therefore the input to the second permutation call that means v plus u plus k2 that again collides with the input of some other primitive query that means it's a simultaneous collision to the primitive query so 
similarly so back four is basically again the uh, asymmetric uh, or, or, a, or a mirror image of the event back three that means if there's a construction query x comma y and the output of a pre of, of the output of the second permutation call collides with the output of some primitive query and therefore this input is determined and therefore the output of the first permutation call again collides with the output of some other primitive query so back five says that if the input of the first permutation call so so we have again another two construction queries so the input of the first permutation call collides with the input of some primitive query and the input to the second permutation call for this construction query x y that collides with x prime so that, that collides with the input of the first permutation call for the another construction query so bat 6 is again a mirror image of the bat 5 which says that we have two construction query x y and x prime y prime such that the input to the so sorry the output to the second permutation call collides with the output to the uh, primitive uh, the output of the primitive query and therefore the output of the first permutation call for this first construction query collides with the output of the second permutation call of the other construction query so bat 7 says that we have two primitive two construction queries such that so the first construct the input to the first permutation call of the first construction query collides with the input to the uh, uh, to, to some primitive query and uh, and, and, and and the for the, for the other construction query the in the input to the first permutation call collides with the input to the uh, input to some other primitive query say u u1 prime okay and there and the for for those two construction query the in the input to the second permutation call collides that means we have these two construction queries x y and x prime y prime such that x plus k1 which is the input to the first permutation call that collides with the input to some primitive query which is u1 similarly we have the input to the first permutation call for the other construction query which is x prime plus k1 that collides with the input of some other primitive query say u1 prime and therefore the output the corresponding output the corresponding input to the second permutation call which is say v1 plus u1 plus k2 that collides with v1 prime plus u1 prime plus k2 right again bat 8 is just a mirror image of bat 7 so here's a bat 9 this says that the number of uh, construction and primitive queries such that the x plus to the such that the uh, first uh, input to the first permutation call collides with the input to some primitive query this set should not be too much right so this the, the cardinality of this set should if it is at least greater than square root of q then it is bad similarly bat 10 is the mirror image of bat 9 where it's the it's a restriction imposed on the output set so bat 11 says that the number of colliding queries such that y equals to y prime so the number of colliding queries should not be too much so if it is like square greater than square root of q then we will call that the event is bad so we require some additional bad events and these bad events will be required to you know to lower bound the uh, inter real interpolation probability for good transcripts so uh, the most difficult part of this paper is to analyze is the analysis of the good transcript and we will not go into the detail of it but we will try to give a very high level overview of the uh, proof technique that we have used here so first of all we will partition the set of transcripts into three sets and this set of transcript so we will partition it into three three sets the first type says that a set of transcript whose input collides with the input of some primitive queries the second one says the set of transcript whose output collides with the output of some primitive queries and the third one is the set of transcript whose input and output are fresh so the analysis of the first two cases is easy more or less but the analysis of the third case is the most difficult one so in order to analyze uh, uh, the, the the third one so we we again subdivide it into two parts so in case A, we will partition this set of transcript whose input and output are fresh. We will partition it uh, in, in case A and case B, where in case A, it says that a set of transcripts where the input to the second permutation call collides with the input to the first one. That means we have, say for example, so uh, so we have, say suppose this x, y and x prime, y prime, suppose for the time being, we will assume that the input and output of these two permutations are fresh right but here it may so happen that this input to the first permutation call that means x plus k1 so p x1 so sorry so input to the second permutation call for this construction query that means this this part so this collides with this okay 
So that means P of x plus k1 plus k2 plus x plus k1 that collides with x prime plus k1. If this happens, then the out we cannot sample the output. The output is determined. And case B, we will analyze with the remaining set of transcript. So analysis for case A, that means where the uh, there's a dependency between the permutation calls. So for analysis of case A, we will count first the number of transcript that satisfies this case A, and that will fix a t many input output pairs for the permutation where t is the number of pairs that satisfying this 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 equation this equation. And for the analysis of case B, we will identify this intermediate value z, and we will uh, we will identify that this z should be valid, and we will count the number of such valid or good z. And for a fixed good z, we will count the number of permutation that realizes this given transcript. So, in order to conclude this paper, so in this paper we have shown that uh, that we have proposed an inverse free public free public permutation based PRF in more or less sequential mode, and it achieves. Uh, type security bound uh, roughly of the order of 2 power 2n by 3 many queries and we believe that the beyond birth bound security of this construction will remain whole even if the uh, the round keys are identical that means even if k k1 equals to k2 so thank you for listening this talk and if you have any query you can send an email to any one of us thank you